Hello everybody, this is day 10 of our astronomy unit and in this video we're going to continue talking about planetary orbits and I'm going to show you a couple things about ellipses. Um, so before we start in with ellipses, I'll start this video actually by drawing a circle. Um, that way we can kind of compare and contrast circles to ellipses. So I can draw a circle by putting this push pin into a piece of paper, a little foam underneath. And if I use this string as a radius and I keep it nice and tight, then I can draw a circle. Because what a circle is, is a shape where all of the points on the shape, this curved line, they're going to be the same distance away from the center of the circle. Um, or, since we're going to be talking about ellipses in just a second, we can call that the focus of the circle. So if I were to measure the radius to the center here, I get about 10 centimeters. And if I were to measure it at any other part of the circle, if I did a good job, I should get just about 10 centimeters. If you guys like my old school throwback NBA ruler back from when I was in like fifth grade. Uh, so next up we're going to draw an ellipse and I can draw an ellipse by putting two push pins in and instead of having one center like the circle had, remember before I called it a focus, the ellipse is going to have two central points that we call the foci because foci is the plural of focus, just like cacti is the plural of cactus. A weird English language for you. So I kept that string nice and tight. Let's call that our circle, just for reference for later. Uh, and here we have our first ellipse. So I'm going to label this ellipse number one. So here's one of my foci, foci one. Here's my second focus of the ellipse, foci two. And we can calculate the eccentricity of any ellipse by dividing the distance between the foci by the length of the major axis. So, for ellipse number one, let's work this out. The distance between the two foci, I'll put the zero centimeter increment here, and to foci two, it's about 3.4 centimeters. I'm gonna divide that by the length of the major axis. Now the length of the major axis is from one end of the ellipse to the other, and that line goes through both foci. I'm gonna draw this line. I'll put my zero increment on one end of the ellipse, and this major axis is one, two, three, 16.4. Point four centimeters. I'll just grab my calculator. Okay, so when I divide these two numbers, uh, since I have centimeters divided by centimeters, the units are actually going to cancel each other out. So then I'll take 3.4 divided by 16.4. I would get 0 0.207. And since it's eccentricity, I'm going to have no units. So ellipse number one's eccentricity is 0.207. So the reason that we started with the circle is if we were to compare that to the ellipse, if I wanted to measure the eccentricity of my circle, since there's only one focus here, then the distance between foci of my circle, that would be zero. So it doesn't matter what the length of the major axis is, if there is no distance between the two foci, if I just have one of them, then the circle's eccentricity is going to equal zero. So the more 
eccentric this ellipse gets, the less it's going to be looking like a circle. So let's just look at one more or two more quick examples. So now I'm going to increase the distance between my two foci for ellipse number two. I'll repeat this procedure again. So I'm gonna hold the string nice and tight and draw the ellipse around those two foci. Now for ellipse two, let's see, eccentricity of ellipse two, that will be the distance between these two foci. Oops, sorry about that, refocus. So zero, this would be 6.2.2 centimeters. Divide that by the length of the major axis, which is 13.4 centimeters. Again, our centimeters cancel out. And our answer is 0 0.463. Again, no unit in our eccentricity. So ellipse two has an eccentricity of 0.463. So let's take a look at one last example here. And that is when the distance between two foci equals the length of the major axis. So if I were to put this one focus point in here, if I were to stretch this string out as far as it goes, when theoretically, if I were to be able to get a sharp enough pencil in and draw this ellipse, if it was tight enough, then the major axis would extend just as far as the distance between two foci. So if I were to measure both of those things, they would pretty much be the same. So for ellipse number three, if the distance between two foci here is about 10.1 centimeters, and the length of the major axis, therefore, would be just about the same thing, 10.1 centimeters. Well, these would cancel out, and 10 to any number divided by itself would equal one. So pretty much, if we were to have the eccentricity of one, we would have a straight line between those two foci uh, without too much of an ellipse happening. So that's why we're always gonna see the eccentricity of an ellipse be between zero and one. It's always gonna be a decimal number. And in earth science, we tend to round it to the thousandth place or the third decimal point. One last thing, since we're talking about orbits. So this can be any celestial object in orbit. It could be a planet that's orbiting a sun. It could be a comet or an asteroid that's also in orbit around the sun. And when we say around the sun, it would be around, or the sun or the star that it's orbiting around, revolving around, would be located at one of these foci. And the other foci would just be empty space. And we learned in yesterday's lesson that when that orbiting object, say if it was a planet, when it was closest to the star, it's gonna have the most or the highest orbital velocity and we'll also see the strongest amount of gravitational attraction between the planet and the star. When we're further away, it's gonna have a lower velocity and we're gonna see less of a gravitational attraction between the planet and the star. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow when we continue talking about eccentricity. Have a nice day.